There has been much ado about the Steam Deck's immutable file system. I've heard pundit and Linux enthusiast alike say that it's a violation of the fundamental spirit of Linux or that it's robbing end users of their agency to modify and tinker with their deck's Arch Linux based operating system. Or I've heard more conspiratorial people say that it's a ploy to make SteamOS a proprietary Android like system or that it's simply just not cool. Now, I take exception with all of these assertions, and I'll run through my reasoning for each of them. First, that it violates the spirit of Linux somehow. Now, this is absurd to me for many reasons, not the least of which is that the spirit of Linux is open collaboration between software developers. It doesn't have much to do with end desktop users. Now, you could argue that Linus Torvald's proclamation that we don't break user space might be a spirit of Linux thing too, but in that case, the idea of an immutable file system actually kind of goes hand in hand. And that's because an immutable file system is kind of a misnomer. Instead of immutable file system, it's an immutable root file system, or the OS files are read only. But all of that is ridiculous, because to me, this assertion that an immutable file system violates the spirit of Linux has more to do with the next assertion, and I'm gonna dismantle that right now. See, I've heard some folks say that the immutable file system is robbing users of their ability to modify and tinker with their OS. That's absolutely not true. Again, for a number of reasons. First, you can install a massive library of Linux apps through Flatpak. All of this gives you great control over what apps are on your system and how they run. But it's also easy to install pretty much any other Linux distribution on your Steam Deck, or even install Windows if you're into self-flagellation. But if you want to stick with SteamOS, it's trivial. It's just two commands at a maximum to unlock the root file system. You can even update systemd services without having to unlock your file system. So there are four different ways that you can tinker with your Steam Deck's OS. And I think it's pretty clear that it's not a violation of the user's rights to tinker. And that leads me to my next talking point, that this is somehow an attempt by Valve to make their own quasi-proprietary Android-like OS. Now, despite the fact that Android as a baseline is free and open source, this is the kind of paranoia that results from years of abuse from companies like Google and Microsoft and Oracle. If a massive company like Valve wants to use Linux, well, they must have a nefarious intention, right? This paranoia is unwarranted though, because the evidence of the contrary is huge. Valve contributes to free and open source projects both in terms of code and monetarily. Pharonix even proclaimed that Valve is a wonderful upstream contributor to free and open source software. And finally, I've heard folks say that it's just not cool that Valve is doing this. And while cool is a fairly subjective metric, I've got to say that I disagree with this assertion. Several years ago, I heard about Fedora Silverblue, which is an operating system that implemented a similar immutable root file system for security and stability purposes. And I thought that the idea was intriguing and crucially cool. Keeping the OS files on lockdown and having them untouchable by end users, save for OS upgrades, while still giving them the user space freedom to do whatever they needed to, that has massive appeal to me as both a system administrator and an end user, especially when it comes to the Linux desktop. And that's really why Valve did this. They needed a way to provide a stable baseline for end users. People who are coming to Linux from PC gaming, people who have no clue how Linux works, who are accustomed to the way of Windows, and they have no idea how to actually administer a Linux operating system. Valve needed a way to ensure that a Linux desktop installed across millions of devices behaved more like an appliance than an unstable Linux machine when a novice goes poking around in the system files. See, in my opinion, the immutable root file system was the way to go. It was a way for Valve to ensure stability and reliability for games, for Proton, and for end users. And I think they absolutely nailed it with SteamOS. Now, is that to say that all paranoia is completely unwarranted? No. I mean, Valve is in a position where they could do a lot of harm to the free software movement if they so chose. But if we're being honest, many huge companies are in that same position. IBM, Canonical, the list goes on and on. Now, I am absolutely not saying that any of these companies intend to do harm, but could they? Given their position and status, absolutely. 
Valve's just one of the most visible and public facing companies in this position. It's our obligation as free software enthusiasts to keep the movement heading in the right direction. It's a good thing for us to call out FOSS license abuse. It's the right move to work together to ostracize companies that violate the spirit of the open source community. But it is wrong headed and insulting to criticize SteamOS for having an immutable file system when First of all, they didn't even invent the idea. There's nothing wrong or nefarious with having an immutable OS. And critically, an immutable OS is objectively the right choice for Steam Deck's operating system. That's my rant. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.